Howdy folks, today I want to offer some experienced insights into choosing the right everyday carry holster. Okay, so choosing the right everyday carry holster is something that um, pretty much every concealed carrier struggles with for uh, quite a while. Uh, in fact, many of us never stop struggling with it, still trying to find exactly just the right one. Um, so there are, uh, there are a lot of factors that go into uh, making a holster, number one, just objectively good, and number two, right for you. Uh, each of us is different. We've got different body shapes, we're different sizes. Um, we have different carry positions that we want to um, uh, use the holster for. And we also have different needs. Our gun has a light, it doesn't have a light, it has a laser, you know, whatever the, whatever the thing is, if it's an RMR cut. All of these are things that factor into what is the right holster for you. So uh, even though, and then once, by the way, once you find the right holster for you, what generally ends up happening is that um, you just stay on the lookout for an even better one because maybe there's just some inherent flaw or something that you you like you know most of the things about a holster but there's something that could be improved or whatever so this is what we struggle with and and I'll tell you most concealed carriers end up spending a, first of all a lot of time but also hundreds maybe even thousands of dollars trying to figure this stuff out we end up with a drawer or a box or you know whatever a closet full of holsters that we're never going to touch again and now what I have are the ones that are either my everyday carry holster uh, or some version of it or others that are uh, they're sort of task specific mission specific uh, what I want to do today is save you hundreds of dollars I want to try to clear up some things and give you some tips that are going to stand you in good stead and just you know keep that money in your accounts so you can spend on ammo <laughs> so you can see laid out before you uh, a whole bunch of holsters that are mine um, some of them are the ones that i use every day and some of them are ones that again they're kind of task specific or again a couple of these i'm just i'm never going to use but it's i'm glad that i have them uh, on hand here because uh uh, I want to show you some counter examples. So I want to start with some do's and don'ts for choosing the right holster. Um, I want to start with the don'ts. Don't choose a holster that doesn't conceal well. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of obvious, by the way. Uh, it's a concealed carry holster, so it should do the number one job of concealing well. Um, the problem with this is that you don't generally know how well it conceals until you get it in your hands, you get your gun in it, it's in your waistline, and um, you try it with whatever clothes that you're gonna uh, use it with, that's when you find out. So that's probably the thing, uh, one of the two most uh, common things you're gonna spend the most money on, uh, searching for, because you gotta get it in your hands. And concealed carry holsters cost anywhere from like 40 to 120 bucks for a good one, somewhere in there. So if you're gonna spend, uh, if you're gonna buy several of them, it's gonna take a while. Um, so that's, that's the first don't. don't. Don't buy one that doesn't conceal well. The second of all, don't buy one that has leather in it. That's anything that is a leather holster, like it's a complete leather holster, or one that is like a hybrid that is partially leather, partially kydex, or some other material. It doesn't matter. If there's leather on the holster, it's going to become a negligent discharge waiting to happen. Trust me on this. They may start out very good. A lot of good leather holsters start out very good, um, but they end up becoming um, negligence machines. You don't want that. You want something that you can use day in, day out, you know, for for a long time, years, I don't want to say forever, uh, Kydex will eventually you know, break down, but it's going to take quite a while if you get a good quality one. So no leather, just avoid it completely. So the next thing is uh, no wide clip. There, there are different kinds of clips. You can, I don't know how much you can make out here on the table in front of me, but there are some that have wide clips. Here's an example. I'll show you this one. I'm going to cover up the brand because I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus. But it's got this wide clip. And you can see that it has kind of a hinge at the top. And uh, 
the grabby part down at the bottom there. These are bad for a host of reasons. Um, the most important reason is they, uh, they simply don't work well. They will come out with your gun. It's happened to me in my early days, and I've seen it happen a dozen times uh, in classes and in training at the range to other people. It can't grab the belt well, especially when you're using a good thick belt. Now, not all good gun belts need to be thick, but uh, if you're wearing a thick one, what happens is your clothing and the thick belt go up into here, into the clip, and they push it out so it opens up. So you're already, you've lost, you know, the majority of the retention, uh, the belt retention of, of the holster. And so when you go to draw your pistol, well, the whole thing comes out, and now you got to pull the holster off, and it, and it could get you killed. Um, it, uh, it's, it's certainly not what you want to train with. Uh, at the very least, it's going to just be a, a nuisance. But for the most part, it could get you killed. The other thing is, guns, especially ones that are larger, let's say like a Glock 19 or larger, they're, the grip is full of ammo, and so there's weight up here that is you know, moving when you're running, if you're... You're crouching and standing and you're, or you're running whatever you're doing it's working this and so we can just work loose and pop right out of your belt these clips are notorious for that and they're also notorious by the way for not concealing well this configuration that sits flat on the front face of of the holster does not conceal well now there are some companies that try to make it work what they'll do is they will you can see this one right here it uh it has a flat top and the clip is flat on top. Well, what that does is that makes the gun stick way out, you know, the side, uh, no matter where you're carrying it. If it's an appendix position, if it's, you know, at three or four o'clock, something like that, it's, uh, it's not tilted into your body. It's tilted away from your body pretty much. But what some companies will do is they will make the kydex, if, if I'm holding the, the, the holster up like this, here's the, um, Here's the kydex, here's the clip. Uh, actually, the way to show it is to, uh, to have it like this. I'll put the, the clip kind of angled this way so when you put it flat on your belt, it turns the gun into your body. That's a good thing, that's a good mechanism, and I wish more companies would do that. But again, you've got the problem of this wide clip that is a failure point. So don't use a holster that has a wide clip like that. So the next thing is thin kydex. Um, don't buy a holster that has thin kydex. The primary reason not to is that they break far too easily. Um, so, and you, again, this is something that you can't necessarily tell unless you have it in your hand. So maybe you're gonna have to spend some money to figure that out. Uh, but again, hopefully with my tips today, you won't have to. Um, you can, when you have it in hand, you can hear uh, versus, okay. I don't know if you heard that difference here, but this is kind of a, a high-pitched clack, and this is sort of a, a low-pitched thunk when I'm tapping on it with my fingernail. Thin kydex will crack easily. You'll begin to have cracks at the stress points around the clip or around uh, seams, rivets, these kinds of things. Um, also, if you happen to leave it in a hot car, for instance, I don't recommend you do that, but if you leave it in a hot car, it can just deform. The weight of of itself will just, it'll begin to melt and it will just sort of sag and pretty soon your gun doesn't fit. So no thin kydex, get good quality thick kydex. And there's, uh, there's different levels of that. So what do you look for? Well, the primary thing obviously is make sure it conceals well. We kind of talked about, about that. Um, you have to get it in hand, but the, the, the next thing is get a holster that you can train with. It could be the best, it, it's comfortable, it fits you, it uh, conceals well, but you can't train with it. Um, it's useless to you because you, you need to be able to train with the holster that you're gonna carry all day every day. So here's an example of uh, some reasons why you can't train with a holster. If it's one for, for instance, that fits a Glock 26, fits a Glock 19, fits a Glock 17, all of these guns will go into it fine, but be, uh, because of that, maybe the end of it is cut short. Let me hold up uh, something here. It may not be quite so long to cover the whole muzzle. It may be cut off about here. And so an inch or, or a half inch or maybe more than an inch of the, the gun's muzzle sticks out of the end of the holster. 
if you're carrying an appendix position, that's down into your junk, and if you're carrying back here, that's down onto your butt uh, and your lower back. You start training with this after 50 rounds or so, that thing's gonna be pretty hot. And then for real, you know, if you're doing good consequential training, you're up to 200, 300 rounds in a session, that thing's steaming hot. You don't want that touching certain things in there. And if it's exposed outside of the kydex, you're gonna get hurt. And you, it may uh, cause you to do something dangerous with the gun when that happens. So people tend to react violently when they're burned in certain places. So um, make sure that it, is, it covers the complete muzzle. Um, another reason you can't train with it is that it, uh, you can't reholster well. Here's a, an example. This is kind of a sad example. This is one of the better concealable, uh, concealing holsters ever made. It's the Eidolon uh, by Raven Concealment. This is a fantastic holster for all kinds of reasons. It's got this uh, uh, pad in here that tilts the gun, you know, that rests on your body so it tilts the gun back into you. It has this claw, I think they call it that grabs your belt and pushes it over. So it's pushing the top of the gun into you and it's pushing the grip of the gun into you. That is a fantastic mechanism um, for concealment and it works very well. Uh, but it has a couple of problems. This is about the most uncomfortable holster I've ever owned. I tried to carry with it for a while, but it was just so uncomfortable that uh, it, it made me not want to wear it all day. Uh, uh, and so I was trying to find excuses not to wear it sometimes, and that's a bad thing. The other thing is drawing from the holster and reholstering is a big part of training. You know, I get 50 to 150 draws from concealment uh, every time I'm out at the range training. Well, with this one, because of how it angles everything in for excellent concealment, to get it reholstered, I either had to point the muzzle into my body to get it in there, or, um, excuse me, or another thing was happening and that was my undershirt. I wear an undershirt um, because of uh, everyday carry. I just don't like the gun up against my skin. Um, it would begin to foul the holster. And so reholstering, it was a two-handed thing. I had to like negotiate the shirt around the, the open port here to get things to work. You can't do that. You need a holster that you can draw from and it stays where it's, where it's put. You do whatever you're doing you can lift up your shirt and put it right back in straight so that you're not pointing it into your body uh, uh, or having to like do a thing with your fingers to get stuff out of the way. It just needs to be one that, that the gun could come in and out of. So um, that disqualified this. I can't train with it, so I, can, I can't use it for everyday carry. Uh, so another thing to do is to get 100% Kydex. Now I mentioned, you know, no leather, but just Kydex. Make sure your holster is made 100% of Kydex for the, you know, for the shell of it. You might have rubber grommets and stuff like that around for, for various uh, tension points or clips or whatever, but I'm talking about the shell, Kydex only. That's a deal breaker. Make sure it is built to conceal. And there's, a, there's various ways that it might be built to conceal. I talked about one, like putting the clip uh, on an angled portion of Kydex so it turns the, the holster into your body. That's one. Um, uh, another one is that it's adjustable for ride height. You want a hol holster that you can put up high if that's how you like to carry it or that goes way into your, into your belt line. Um, you also want one that you can change the angle on because how it's generally built might not be perfect for you even though the holster's right. You might want it straight down or you might want it canted one way or the other depending on um, you know, your particular needs. Uh, and so there's uh, another way that you might accomplish concealment is for instance on this holster, this is the uh, Incog Eclipse. You can see the clip is angled. And so what it does is when you put it on your belt, it, it presses back like that and it presses the gun into your body, it presses it in. And I can tell you from experience that helps it to conceal very well. Um, so anyway, get one that is built for, to specifically address concealment. Uh, and then the last thing, and this is a, actually a big deal, get one that is comfortable. This is also, this is sort of the second one that you can't really 
uh, tell if it's a good holster, if it's comfortable for you, unless you have it in your hand, in your waistband. Um, so comfort matters because if it's not comfortable, you are going to find excuses uh, to not wear it. And the point of everyday carry is to carry all day long, every day. No exceptions. So those are the do's and don'ts. Now, in my experience of wading through all of this stuff and figuring out what works, what doesn't, and again, for me, um, different things may work for you. I waded through the wide clips. I waded through the super systems like the Eidolon and found just deficiencies I couldn't deal with. What I settled on, and I don't want to say that I settled, is the, is the best inside the waistband concealed carry holster ever made. And it's the Inkagi Clips, or the Inkagi Clips Shadow if it's a light bearing pistol. So here's a general example of it. You can see that it has one clip. The one clip is uh, in the center of the, uh, of the holster, really close to the bore line, um, kind of at the bottom of that. It is adjustable. There's a tension adjusters here. You can set the mojo. The mojo is this little thing right here that connects the holster to the clip because the clip is plastic and the mojo is an aluminum piece and then you've got your Kydex holster here. You can set it at various heights on, on here. You can also get, I'm sorry, on the, on the body of the holster, you can also get clips of different lengths. You can also adjust the angle. Where's the... Okay, here's one where I've adjusted the angle to be uh, something other than straight up and down. So that cants this gun over a little bit. The other feature of this, I don't know if you could tell, is that it the inside, while it's got a nice slick kydex, the outside is covered with what they call tactical fuzz. That's, uh, okay, great buzzword there. Um, it's like suede. It's very soft and grippy. Um, uh, it's, I'm telling you, it's like holding leather, suede leather in your hand, brushed leather in your hand. What that does is it grabs your garment, and so where you put your holster, it stays put. It doesn't move along your body line, and it doesn't move as far as angle goes. It stays right where it is. I can train with it. Um, it covers the, uh, all of the slide, so I don't get burned. Uh, I can go in and out of the holster very easily, straight up and down, without having to cant it, you know, my aim the muzzle at myself. Um, because of that tactical fuzz, it keeps my undershirt in place, it, it stays in place on my pants. So where I, when I pull out my gun and do whatever I'm going to do, that holster is right where it's supposed to be when I go back to it. Um, so I'm later going to do a review of this holster, a full review, and I'll talk about all of its features, uh, that kind of stuff. But compared to Eidolon and some other, you know, fairly decent, well-known brands that use these horrible clips, uh, and you saw I did a review um, very recently here of the, uh, who was that, Bravo Concealment uh, Torsion Holster. It was very good, by the way. This was one of the better ones, but it's still uh, about a B. Uh, because of some issues. Um, I think that you cannot go wrong, no matter what body type, no matter where you carry, if it's appendix, if it's three, four, five, you know, whatever o'clock, if you're left handed even on the other side, um, the Incog Eclipse is gonna be the best holster you can buy. And it costs 80 bucks generally, and if you want to change up some of the features of it, it, it can cost more, uh, but 80 bucks is kind of the baseline. I have lots of them. I have, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have the one that is in my pants right now. So I've got eight of them for various guns and different setups. Like this one here is for my pistol that has the uh, Surefire XC1 light. This is for my pistol that has the Enforce light. Uh, and then I have some that are without lights and for various models here. So I hope that you found all of this helpful. I want to save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And so I think if you're just getting into this or if you've kind of solved that holster problem but you're on the lookout for something better and you've not tried the Incog Eclipse, just go and get an Incog, configure it to how you know your gun and your setup is. 
Get that in your hands and I'll bet you'll uh, see that as money well spent. Now, by the way, Incog's not paying me. They're not a sponsor. Uh, I bought every single one of these with, with my own money. Um, I'm just trying to offer the voice of experience of having gone through, golly, dozens of holsters to find the one that I think is going to work for pretty much everybody. Uh, it certainly works for me. But uh, so there you go. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you find it useful. Um, and I hope that it saves you a bunch of money. Uh, if you have comments, questions, please hit me up below. Uh, and um, remember, training works. Make time for training. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.